For our first question, we're going to look at something which is often asked in interviews and actually which is really important to understand in Python. And that is the idea of mutable versus immutable types. So let's just start off with a definition and then we'll go from there. So mutable means that it can change, right? So mutable equals like, you know, can mutate, which sounds really like sinister and evil, but actually mutate just means change. So it can change. So some types of data in Python are mutable, they can be changed, while others are immutable, means they cannot be changed. Okay, that sounds easy on the face of it, but what does it really mean? First and most importantly, this has nothing whatsoever to do with a constant. There are many languages in which you can define constants, meaning if I say x equals 100, like let's say I could say like const x equals 100, this does not work in Python. But if I were to do that, and then later I were to say x equals 200, I would get an error. Why? Because x is always pointing to 100, always containing 100, and thus it can never change. A constant means that there is a uh, constant, a, a permanent link between a variable name and between a value. Constants do not exist in Python, and people often confuse constant with mutable. Okay, so what is this whole mutable versus immutable thing? Well, let's take a string, s equals a, b, c, d, e. And we know that we can get the first element with s0, and let's say the element of index 2 with s2. What if I want to change it? What if I say s0 equals an exclamation point? We're not allowed to do that. It says stir objects does not support item assignment, and that's for the simple reason that strings are immutable. Strings cannot be changed. Once I've defined a string, once I've created a string object, like here, A, B, C, D, E, it will never change. Now, you might be saying, wait a second. Like, <laughs> this might raise a few questions. Why would that be? And I don't think that's true. So let's start with the first one. Like, why would that be? Why would Python define an immutable type? Well, immutable types actually have a whole lot of advantages. One advantage is because they can't change, their space in memory is known from the start and won't ever change. So there's no like spare space needed in memory and we don't need to sort of change things around. We also can know that if, an, if we have two variables pointing to the same immutable types, so if I say y equals x, oops, sorry, uh, s, sorry, y equals s. So now we have you know s and y both refer to the same string. And there's no chance that I can change s and thus affect y without knowing it, or change y and affect s without knowing it. If I pass my string to a function, the function can't change the string and thus affect what's going on elsewhere to whoever else is referring to that string. So actually, in many, many ways, immutable types make things easier and they make things more efficient. Also, if I want to get the length of the string, len of s, it comes back right away. Why? Because the size is known, it's part of the string object. So so that's like the, you know, why should you care? And doesn't it like change things in the language? Well, and you might be thinking also it's not true. After all, I can say s plus equal f. And sure enough, you see s has changed. Aha, uh -huh, but that's not true. What happened when I said s plus equals f? It's the same as saying s equals s plus f. Well, what's happening there is we are creating a new string, a new string that is immutable. We are not affecting the old string in the slightest. And so s will now refer to that new string, s plus f, meaning a, b, c, d, e, f, whereas y will be left behind and refer to the old string. See, so we didn't actually change the string. Rather, we said that s now points to a new string. It refers to a new string. So that's another advantage of immutable types, that you know that you can't change it, as I mentioned, and you know that even when you say something like plus equals on a string, you're not really changing the string. So... Mutable versus immutable is really important. And this is an example of an immutable type. What's a classic example of a mutable type? A list. So my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I say now my list of zero equals exclamation point. That works just fine because lists are immutable. They can be changed. And as you see here, my list sure enough has changed. So if I say, right, my list equals, let's just do this again. My list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And now I'll say y equals my list. So both of them now refer to the same thing. And if I say my list is here, let's make some question marks. So my list has changed, and so has y. Because both of these variables refer to the same data. They refer to the same list, and we actually change the list. So the difference between immutable and mutable then has to do with not can we reassign variables that are referring to them, but can the data itself change? So what is immutable and what is mutable in Python? So let's make a little list here. 
quartuple. Haha. Ha. All right. So so immutable types. Actually, it starts with the very simplest, right? So we have none and booleans. Let's just call bool, right? And then we'll say int and float and string and tuple. So all of these types are immutable. If you assign a boolean or an integer or float or a string or tuple to a variable, that data will never change. Again, you can reassign the variable to refer to it, but that data will never change. By contrast, we have mutable types that are built in. Those are going to be lists and dictionaries and set. All of these are mutable. So what else does this affect? Right? So I can change a list, I can change a dictionary, I can change a set. What's also important is that if it's mutable, it's almost certainly not going to be hashable, meaning it can't be used as a key in a dictionary. So if you say now d equals a new dictionary, d of my list equals 100, it won't allow for that. It'll say it's unhashable. And typically, mutable data is also unhashable. Now, there's some like you know fuzzy lines there. Uh, so for example, a tuple is immutable, and so it's hashable, can be used as a key in a dictionary. But at the same time, uh, if the tuple contains mutable data, it can't be. So it has to be immutable all the way down. Also, your classes, if you define a class that's mutable almost by definition, and yet um, your classes, your instances of your class are hashable, they can be used in a dictionary. The idea of mutable versus immutable is one of the key ideas to understand in Python. And what it means and what its implications are, are really, really important. So I hope this gave you a good sense of that, and you will see this moving forward um, wherever you work in Python. I'll just add one more point, uh, which is there are languages that sort of move, go, go in either extreme, go to either extreme. There are languages in which case, in which just about everything is mutable, and there are languages in which nothing or almost nothing is mutable. And so it's sort of like Python's in the middle of this continuum. And it's this sort of difference between what's easier for the programmer, what's more efficient for the language, and what dangers do we want to worry about and not worry about in terms of the mutability of our data. Okay, I hope this helped. On to the next question.